buddy, are you poor, destitute, barely scraping by? Yeah. Jeez, you don't need to rub it in. Then you need soul money. Soul what? That's right, here in Fantastivania, you can buy whatever you want, whenever you want, and sell it to the real world. And all you have to do is convert your soul into cash with no spirit down and zero ethereal interest rate. Well, that sounds pretty cool, I guess. You guess? God, would you knock that off? No! This could be you forever! Living the easy life, stress-free, with all the money, food, and pleasure you could ever ask for. Okay, well, I guess that does sound pretty awesome. What's the catch? Well, you do have to sacrifice your eternal soul piece by piece until you're nothing but a dried out desolate husk of a man. Oh, whatever. You've seen this show before. You think I have a soul left at this point? That's great! What do you say we start you off with six billion dollars? Oh my god, that's great! Give me the all. It's okay, don't worry about it. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention. What's that? Oh. You have to fight me to the death in order to keep the money. If you lose, I get it all instead. But you... Hope you didn't want that soul. You evil fuck. No refunds. Whenever I sang my songs on the stage on my own, whenever I said my words, wishing they would be heard, I saw you smiling at me. Was it real or just my fantasy? You'd always be there in the corner of this tiny. Welcome to Cover by Cover. I'm Johann Faust. And I'm Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> okay. Anyway, have you ever wanted to travel to a fantasy world and challenge super strong monsters and beasts with your future and life on the line? Like, actually? Well, neither did the main character of today's show, but in the end, he really didn't have all that much choice in the matter. And no, luckily I'm not talking about Sword Art Online. Hey, you get... Ah, oh, All right, whatever. Control. Let's see. Oh. Are, are you serious right now? I'm we're, counting we're my the money! Middle. I'm counting my money, okay? I'm trying to figure out how many widgets we could buy. I'm thinking, like, three... C. C is an original anime from Tatsunoko Productions, the studio best known for Samurai Pizza Cats, Gotcha Man, Kashurn Sins, and most infamously, Karas. Well, if that isn't a bizarre enough hodgepodge of titles, today's title is only going to make things weirder. Helmed by famed director of all things bizarre looking, Kenji Nakamura, this series does not disappoint. Well, I mean, it might disappoint some people. Oh, go screw. At only 11 episodes, it's probably hard to genuinely disqualify C as worth watching. Unless it's unreasonably horrible. But I guess that's something we're gonna have to find out for ourselves. There. Is that fair enough for you? No! You're already saying that it's gonna be unreasonably horrible. No, that was a possibility. I mean, I'm, it could be great too, like unreasonably great. You know what? Forget it. There's no pleasing you. <laughs> that's what she said. All right, whatever. Before this gets any more off the rails, we're just gonna dive into it. So right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for C, the possibility of money or whatever. I'll find out. We kick things off with some Japanese guy trying to get some money from an ATM, but all his credit cards and debit cards are fresh out of anything monetarily viable. Well, I guess that means he's only got one choice. Sir. Your semen is not a valid form of payment. This is not a sperm bank. 
Okay, Mom. Jeez. Actually, it's this weird-looking black credit card. That's offensive. Okay, it's this weird-looking African-American credit card. There. That's better. Why? Whatever. He puts it in the machine. Okay, and... that's offensive again. Would you shut the hell up? He sticks the card in the machine, triggering this bizarre sequence of events. Okay, I am nowhere near high enough for this. Ooh. All right, what were you saying? So see if you can follow this sequence of events. The machine asks the guy if he wants to make a deal. He says yes and heads to a parking garage where Donald Trump's satanic taxi cab takes him through a doom door to a satanic Wall Street dimension where J. Michael Tatum feigns suicide to get to his mansion made of picture frames and Okay. Stop. It's like a game of chance. Stop. Okay, hang on, hang on. I have not done anywhere near enough drugs to follow this. Can you, like, back up and slow it down a little? I, I guess. Let's okay, do good. a little bit, I guess. I'm just going to get a little bit of a head start. Okay, no, stop that! Are you serious? But, no. Pretty please? All right, since you asked so nicely. Really? No! In all seriousness though, I am legitimately overwhelmed by all of this quote unquote art bombarding me so immediately. It's severe sensory overload and I can barely process anything that's happening. It's so aggressively abstract that before my brain has a chance, I'm already irritated and more likely to not care. Meanwhile, listen as a voice actor desperately tries to impersonate Mark Hamill. Mr. Mikuni, I hate to interrupt such a rousing soliloquy, but it's time to go. That's also how we did it in my day. I thought that deal was going through tomorrow. Due to circumstances beyond my control, I was forced to move it up. And what's wrong with that? Yeah. But I also want to point out how over-designed this guy is. He's like Mad Hatter meets The Medicine Seller. And it's so unnecessary. It's not creepy or scary, it's silly. It's almost like a parody of the Joker, but to get there, they had to make him look like an actual friggin' clown. And they say I'm crazy. But anyway, we finally get to the point of all of this. The deal. Turns out that a deal is, what else, a battle for great profit. From what I can gather, these guys are placing a bet on themselves to win, and the larger the bet, the more powerful they are. I mean, look at Tatum's gigantic... Um, the digital eye thing, and look at poor guy's tiny little one. Uh, hmm. I think there's a dick joke in there somewhere, but anyway, poor guy loses. <laughs> well, now that the awesome money fight is over, it's time to find out how unawesome money can really be. So we have product A and product B. Now the owner of A wants to trade it for B. That doesn't necessarily mean the owner of product B wants to trade for A, right? Are you a third year college student and somehow have no basic understanding of supply or demand? Well here, have several giant books about it. That makes sense, right? Hang on a second, hang on a second, you gotta slow down. These complex concepts are way above my intellectual capabilities. Can someone please dumb things down even further? I want to pass, so I've got to study. That's it! I've got it! I'll go back to college! It'll be so easy this time! It all makes sense now! Why did you still fail the test in your own fantasy? Shut up.
Anyway, this is Kimimuro, and the inquisitive girl is his friend Hanabi. But she's less his friend and more that annoying girl who nags the protagonist about not being serious about school trope. You remember, right? It's Kei Shindo from F. But at least this time, this girl's somewhat subdued about it. A little. I don't understand why you're studying for the civil service exam when you haven't even finished college yet. I want to pass, so I've got to study. Concentrate on graduating or you won't be able to find a job, let alone become a civil servant. Hey, Yoga! Party tomorrow night, you just gotta chip in for booze. Wow, that's what we needed here. Some frat dude bros raging about a keg party in Halo. But in an anime? Could this get any weirder? It's the Dude Bro Anime Podcast, yay! Dude. Bro. Dude. Bro. You ever heard of this anime called uh, C? C? Like, like like the letter of the alphabet. Not like the, not like the ocean. No, the third letter no, of the alphabet. Like you can't catch the mad C. waves on this anime, can no, you? No, no. No. What's it about, man? Uh, I don't really know. I haven't watched it, but I heard it's about money. It sounds yeah. killer. Why would you bring it up if you haven't watched it, bro? Cause it's about money. Money's awesome, bro. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, do you get money for watching it, dude? No, it's paid money. You have to pay money. Oh, well. Buy it. Money's pretty cool though, dude. Yeah, I could use some more money right now, man. That'd be rad. Buy some mad dank with that money, dude. Hell yeah, that's up. How much does your weed cost? I don't know, like fifty-five dollars. What? Yeah. No way, man. Dude, mine's like a hundred. A hundred, dude. You're overpaying, dude. No, man. I mean, it's it's quality. You gotta go. You gotta go tell that dude that you're like, no, dude, it's not worth that. Well, it's probably better than yours. It's not better than mine, dude. That's not true, dude. It has to be. Dude, I get the best stuff from town. Oh no, I know that because the dude tells me it's the best stuff in town. Well, that's how you know it's bullshit. And I go, you talking, man? Smack about my dude, dude. I'm sorry, dude. No. Yeah, calm down, man. My bad. My I'm the one getting it for $55. My bad, bro. Okay, bro. Alright, All right, bro. You want to smoke a bowl right now? Dude. Dude, I'm asking. Uh, no, sorry, man. Alright, hang on uh, a second. Let me, uh, uh, let me turn this thing off real dude. quick. It's the Dude Bro Anime Podcast. Yeah! So Kimimuro gets the hell out of there, and we see that he's pretty damn destitute. Well, what can you do? Meanwhile, at an average Japanese train station... Holy crap, that dude just jumped in front of a train and was brutally killed! Oh well, I guess that ain't no thing in Japan because we cut to a far more interesting average Japanese convenience store for Kimimuro's equally more interesting part-time job. Yes, I'm lying about the interesting part. You do know there's a test tomorrow. No way! This is the first I've heard. Is it a pop quiz? You're gonna need these. I wrote down all the main points for you. Just read them over uh-huh. before you go to sleep, and you'll do fine. Thanks a lot, but you shouldn't have gone out of your way like this. My life would be easier if you get a cell phone. Then I could just text the notes to you. You came all this way just for me? Mm-hmm. So don't say I never do nice things for you, okay? My shift's almost over. What do you say I take you to dinner to say thank you? My boyfriend's waiting for me. Oh. Uh- Rejected! Aw, oh, poor friend zone. Anyway, Kimimuro heads home to study and sleep, but is interrupted by Hatter Clown Joker Deluxe, who tries even more too hard than before to get Kimimuro to join their organization, the Financial District. But Kimimuro turns him down so hard that the asshole deposits 500,000 yen into his account, hypnotizes him, forces him to become a member, and then transports him to the Financial District as the episode ends. Well, that actually wasn't half bad. I'm... I'm interested. Yeah, well, I've got a problem with it. Shocking. By all means, please continue. I will. Uh, Actually, it's I'm will. I'm not saying... Shut up, you dickhead! Anyway. In my opinion, the entire concept of the financial district is being fundamentally mishandled here. The opening scene should have been even darker than it was, with less of J. Michael Tatum's character and solely about the poor guy trying one last time to get out of the hole he's in. All we would have needed was a quick shot of the clown's mouth in Tatum's ear telling him that it was time for his deal. Cut to a very surreal, dark looking part of the financial district, uh, maybe a back alley or something. Their fight takes place, the guy loses, but the atmosphere would have been far more effective. 
Then when Joker McIdiot is trying to entice Kimimuro, he could fly him all over the place and we would see the entire thing for the first time. Instead of having it be so cold and dour looking to begin with, make it look like a gold-plated wonderland. Make the entire appearance of the place a wonderful lie. We as the audience have already seen and know the dark side, but Kimimuro doesn't. Designing it differently would not only create a commentary on the actual seduction of money and how wonderful everything can appear to someone who doesn't have it, but it would also present a facade that would believably convince Kimimuro to accept the invitation as a nearly destitute college student struggling to get by. But no, instead we have to once again deal with a protagonist who wants nothing to do with this supposedly fantastical main plot and has to be dragged into it kicking and screaming. Well guess what, it didn't work in Guilty Crown, and so far it's not working here. You do realize that there's another episode, right? Yeah, I know, I just, I really needed to get that off my chest. I feel a lot better now. Okay. Well, now that Will's done whining... What?! We kick off the second episode with Babby's first acid trip, which comes chock full of very necessary exposition. Splendid, yes! The Bank of Midas Plaza. You're despicable. Whoa, what is that? An asset. A personal asset, to be precise. They assist entrees during a deal. That ticker will tell you everything you need to know about your dealing opponents. Opponents? Each week, entrees are required to participate in a competition known as a deal. Consider it your price of admission. It's done wonders for me. But before you can ask any questions or think about anything at all, it's time for a deal! Ah, oh, come on, this guy hasn't explained anything to Kimimuro. Was the goal of this thing to throw another log on the fire? No, there's no time. Here's a lolly. We'll fix it in post. If you don't at least try to protect yourself, you're gonna go bankrupt! You know, all this obnoxious, annoying crap could have been avoided if only anything could have been explained. I mean, it seems fine. It's his first battle, so let's pit him against Thor, God of Thunder. No, there's no time. Jolly, have to go! It's time to save the world! What are you talking about? Joe, there's no time! Uh, how the hell did I get here? Joe, I told you, there's no time! Look out, there's an idiot! Oh shit! Anyway, Kamimuro's asset explains to him that he needs to buy his attacks and command her in battle. However, the amounts he has to spend and what the attacks are called are left to the imagination. I guess because our hero still has no actual idea what the hell is going on. Metzoflation, 10 million, do it! Metzoflation. Okay, Metzoflation, 10 million! So stern. Four? in his first deal. Well, he didn't do shit. It was his asset who apparently knows everything and straight up just told him what to do. I hope he gets better than this or this entire show is going to be seriously embarrassing. Anyway, I do have to admit that the fight was actually really cool and I appreciate that Kamimuro's opponent wasn't utterly annihilated and murdered like the guy at the beginning of the episode. We already saw what happens when somebody fights for their life and loses, but the outcome of this fight establishes that things are a lot more sensible in the financial district than they let on. They actually do want to sustain their entrepreneurial base, and the entire concept is a lot more legitimate as a result. Back in the real world, Kamimuro starts seeing black money everywhere after he finds out that he has over 33 million yen in his bank account. He happily heads to the cafeteria and sits down for a nice relaxing lunch with Hanabi. In this day and age, nobody knows what's gonna happen next. You gotta save in case an emergency pops up. Woman has been charged with murder after suffocating her two-year-old toddler. Investigators say that the woman recently lost her job in another series of What the fuck? What was the point of that? It was a throwaway line. Why? Well, it's okay. There's no time. We cut to Tatum's giant corporation that I guess he owns for an extremely alcohol-infused board meeting. 
I think it's an attempt to win you over. He's been plotting the downfall of Fox McRainer for some time now. One bottle of wine, and he thinks he can use me to take down a rival company? By the way, local opposition seems to have turned the current administration against us on the public utilities matter. As usual, the masses are short-sighted. If the public won't work with us, we'll go private. We'll just have to grease a few palms. Consumer spending is- Jeez, are you serious right now? How much can this guy throw back in the span of a minute? Find anything? Yes, sir. I don't need this straight now. I'll drive home. Sir, I don't think that's safe. This is your sixth bottle this morning. I'm fine. Bring me my Lamborghini. Sir, you don't own a Lamborghini. Then bring me my Bugatti. You don't have one of those either. Then give me my Messergini Gatti. Okay, that's not a real car. You don't tell me what to do. I. Oh. <sighs> Meanwhile, Kimimuro causes trouble at his job because he thinks this black money is fake when it's actually real money that he sees this way now because he's a member of the financial district. Some yan key douche is causing trouble when Tatum shows up seemingly out of nowhere to explain the situation. But you're not used to the black money, are you? Hey, who are you? I'm just someone who happened to see your first deal. You're pretty impressive for a rookie. So then you've been to that city too? Only people who've been to the financial district can tell the difference between regular and black money. Actually, it's called Midas money, because it's issued from the Bank of Midas. Maybe you're just afraid of losing, is that it? Your father had that fear too. How would you know that? If a comment like that makes you mad, you must be trying to run away from your parents as well. Do you really know my dad? You've got to quit running. You're saying I can't be normal?! We'll find out. My name is Soichiro Mikuni, and I would be willing to help you if you decide to make something of yourself. And with the world economy definitely devastated by the Bank of Midas, the episode ends. So, it's time for that all-important question, JT. Would you continue watching? Yes, of course! Yeah, okay. The concept of this show is actually very intriguing. It might not be the most original idea ever, and the story might be moving a bit too fast, but I would really like to see where this goes and what the creative team does with it. The art is great, aside from the awkwardly inconsistent CGI model for Clowny McDoofus, and although this first couple episodes are far from perfect, they've done their job. I'm in. Aside from my disagreements with some of the artistic choices, I also find this show very entertaining. I don't know how deep it's going to delve into the characters or how well it's going to explore the world of the financial district, but I'm actually feeling good about the direction of the series at this point. And really, sometimes that's all it takes. Give me more. Just in the future, please give us less of that clown guy. He's creepy and weird and poorly designed. Mm -hmm. He's a ripoff of the Joker. Yep. Sucks. Agreed with all of it. Anything else you wanted to add, JT? Yeah, actually... Too I bad, think. there's no time. This has been Cover by Cover. I'm Will Ryan. And I'm JT Camp, reminding you at home, don't smother your children. It will stunt their growth. Because they'll be dead. Why would you bring that back up? It was bad enough once. What's wrong with you? I said don't smother your children. I'm not endorsing it. This is the little end episode. Thing. But why even talk about it? There's no time. What? Darling, so there you